5.1 notes, first notes of the chapter on randomness and probability. So we'll start off with the idea of probability, and that's chance behavior is unpredictable in the short run, but has a regular and predictable pattern in the long run. So uh, the first concept is the law of large numbers. It says that if we observe more and more repetitions of any chance process, the proportion of times that a specific outcome occurs approaches a single value. Okay, and here's a really easy example. So you start flipping a coin, and you want to monitor the proportion of heads. So if you only do a few trials, uh, you might get lucky and have a higher proportion of heads than you have of tails. Or it could go the other way. So in a small number of trials, you may not get exactly 0.5, like what you would expect as a proportion of heads. But if you look at this graph on the right, this is kind of zoomed out. It goes all the way to about 500 trials. And you notice this line will go a little bit above, a little bit below, but the higher those number of trials get, it gets closer and closer and closer to that 0.5 line. So that's the probability that we would expect. That's that single value, 0.5, for the proportion of heads. So in the short run, you could experience a lot of variability. But in the long run, it should get averaged out and approach like the true proportion. The definition here in the green box, that's the definition of probability. So the probability of any outcome of a chance process is a number between 0 and 1. So a number between 0 and 1 that describes the proportion of times that the outcome would occur in a very long series of repetitions. So that last part's kind of key here when we define probability. So a number between 0 and 1 that describes a proportion of the times or of times the outcome would occur in a very long series of repetitions. That's the definition of probability. So the first example here, probability is a measure of how likely an event is to occur. Match the following probabilities with each statement about an event. It looks like we've got one, two, three, four, five, six probabilities, but only four uh, outcomes to match with. The first one says, this event is impossible, it can never happen. So what's the probability for an event that um, can never possibly occur? Well, that would be probability of zero. Like it has a zero percent chance of happening. So the probability would be zero. Part B, this event is certain. It will occur on every trial of the random phenomenon. Um, you know for sure it's going to happen. Okay, if it's absolutely going to occur every single time, that would be a probability of one. So we just covered the two extremes. Absolutely won't happen is zero absolutely will happen, that's one. Part C. This event is unlikely, but it will occur once in a while in a long sequence of trials. So in a long sequence of trials it will happen, but it's, it's rather unlikely otherwise. So um, it should be a lower probability, it can't be zero, because it will happen. So either point zero 0.01 or point 0.3. So to me, 0.3, that's, that's like the equivalent of a 30% chance. And you wouldn't have to go very many trials to get something that occurred 30% of the time. Some people eat lunch, uh, they eat pizza for lunch 30% of the time. You don't have to go very many days before seeing pizza for lunch if it happens 30% of the time. So to me, this is talking about a little bit more rare, um, a little bit more rare of a scenario. I think it's 0 0.01. So in a long sequence of trials, you will see it's about a 1% chance um, but it is, it is rare otherwise. Uh, and then part D. This event will occur more often than not. So it occurs more often than it does not. So to me that means like a majority, and I'm looking at 0 0.6. So 0.6, um, I suppose you could say, you could make an argument for 0.99 as well. That's a really strong, that, that would occur almost every time actually, 0.99 would. So I think this is really hinting at 0.6 like the majority of the time it happens. So those are my four choices um, of the six to match with. Okay, and then I want to look at, let me scroll down here, I want to look at an example about, um, let's say, probability of rain. Let's talk about weather forecast a lot with probability. So. 
let's say the probability of rain is 0.7. It's definitely a reasonable probability. So I want to talk about automatically you should be able to tell the probability of no rain. So if you know in this scenario that the probability of rain is 0.7 and probability is a number between 0 and 1, you know the probability of no rain would just be 1 minus the probability that it rains. So that's a really simple calculation, right? That's 1 minus 0.7. The leftover would be 0.3. So that's actually called the complement rule, and we'll talk about that more later. But the probability that something doesn't happen is 1 minus the probability that it does happen. All right, page two here. Myths about randomness. People often confuse these. So the idea of probability seems straightforward. However, there are several myths of chance behavior we must address. So the first one is the myth of short-run regularity. The idea of probability is that randomness is predictable in the, sh in the long run. So the idea is that it's predictable in the long run, not the short run. That's the point. Our intuition tries to tell us random phenomena should also be predictable in the short run. However, probability does not allow us short run predictions. So don't be fooled by that. You can make predictions in the long run, like for example, over 500 trials, like we looked at the coin flip, but not necessarily in the short run, like 10 trials. All right, and the next myth here, the myth about the law of averages. So probability tells us random behavior uh, sort of evens out in the long run, sort of averages out. Future outcomes are not affected by past behaviors, and that's kind of the point here. Future outcomes are not affected by past behaviors. So that's to say that past outcomes do not influence the likelihood of individual outcomes occurring in the future. And there's been a couple studies done on this. Uh, like in basketball, if someone thinks they have a hot hand, they think they're more likely to make the next shot. And it's actually been proven that each shot is independent of all the other shots. So that's the myth that people often see. It's like, oh, wow, uh, I'm really having a good night. I'm definitely going to make this next shot. Uh, not necessarily true. And we'll talk more about that too. So the big idea here, the big takeaway, is that events like that don't influence each other, like a past event doesn't influence a future event, those things are called independent. And that's also something uh, we'll talk about later as well. So those events would be independent. But people try to associate them together um, like with this misconception about the law of averages. So avoid making mistakes regarding these two myths. And let's look at the final example here. It says, according to the Book of Odds website, www.bookofodds.com, the probability that a randomly selected U.S. adult usually eats breakfast is 0.61. Apparently they have a lot of odds on that website. Explain what probability 0 0.61 means in this setting. Okay, so when you see a question like this, that's really asking you to refer to the definition of probability and then use it in the context of the study. So we looked at the definition of probability already, but that's what we need to invoke here. <clears throat> so the definition of probability, and we'll just use it in context. So what does it mean in this setting? Well, if you select a large sample, <clears throat> large being the keyword there, you select a small sample, it could be a lot of, it could be a lot of variables, a lot of variability. So if you select a large sample of U.S. adults and do what with them? Well, you've got to ask them the breakfast question. So, and ask them if they eat breakfast or not. So ask them if they usually eat breakfast. What would you expect? So in a large sample, the responses should average out, and we can expect a nice number. In this case, we'd expect about 61% of them to say yes to that question. And then part B, why doesn't this probability say 
that if 100 U.S. adults are chosen at random, exactly 61 of them usually eat breakfast. Why doesn't it say that? Well, the big takeaway here is it doesn't talk about um, exact measurements. Like, if you get exactly 100, you'll get exactly 61 to say yes. The reason behind that is that the exact number of breakfast eaters, let's say, what will it do? Well, if you're talking about just any sample of 100 adults, well, it'll vary. The exact number of, of breakfast eaters will vary from sample to sample. So you can't say that for sure about just any sample of 100 U.S. adults. That's the point. So this comic has to do with the myth that we talked about. So the old woman here says, so the, lo the law of averages doesn't guarantee me a girl. I suppose she can't be that old. She's having a lot of kids. So the law of averages doesn't guarantee me a girl after seven straight boys. But can I at least get a group discount on the delivery fee? So uh, just because she thinks she's maybe due, right? People think they're due for a boy in this case because they've had seven girls already. It's not true because each kid's actually independent of the last one. So that goes back to that myth that we talked about from probability. That's all for these notes. I'll see you in class.